spend a little bit of time, maybe run some errands, take the kids with you, and leave your dog at home. And again, this segment pertains mostly to dogs. They're the ones that tend to get a little more anxious. I think anxious. cats want, want us to leave, so they can yeah, just get out. <laughs> so, and then when you do leave, don't make a big production out of it. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'll be back in just a little bit. Don't be so sad. <laughs> and really, you just need to say, I'll see you later, because you raise the tone of your voice, and that tends to, you know, your dog can excited. sense it. Yeah, and they're like, what's going on? Something's are we going happening. Bye -bye? Yeah, so just stay really calm, relaxed. Don't make a big deal out of leaving or coming home. When you come home, you don't want to, um, oh, I'm home, let's have a party. You know, just real casual, quiet. Uh, the other thing, too, is if you have a dog that is very active and they've been playing with the kids all day, all summer, then there might be a little bit of boredom when you're gone. So if you can, run down to the pet supply store and get some great interactive toys where you can put a treat in them, the dog needs to roll the ball around so the treat will fall out. But I do need to mention that if you do have a dog that tends to rip through toys easily, probably don't want to leave those uh, with your dog while you are away, just in case. So do you recommend maybe playing with them before before you leave, like sort of get them pooped out yep. before you have to leave for, yep. for four or six hours? Exactly. Take them for a walk, um, especially now that it's going to start cooling down, hopefully a little more in the mornings. Take them for a walk before you go. And then I also encourage the kids when they come home from school <laughs> to, to uh, actually spend some time with the dog. Maybe if they have homework, they can read their homework to the dog. And sometimes the dogs are smarter than the parents anyway. Right. So they now let me ask you more. this. If you have one dog, obviously they're going to get bored. But if you have two animals, do you have to, I mean, you say playmates. I mean, do you? It's a little, I think that it always helps if there is a companion. They do keep each other company, and we do always say, you know, if, if you're going to adopt one, then just adopt Well, two. with a little guy like this, because, again, we're looking for a home for this little guy, like, what if you have a German Shepherd? Would this be a good companion? Like, do you really need to worry about size because he's so little? For this particular dog, I would worry a little bit about size, not because the German Shepherd would do anything intentionally, but because it's such he a big dog. He might think he's a little too exactly. toy. And you know what? I will tell you something. <laughs> this little girl gets under your feet and you don't even notice. I've tripped probably five times already today. And so with a big dog running around, uh, she could accidentally get stepped on and just one little tiny step oh. on her foot and she could get hurt. Oh, she is, are you giving her like a little doggy yeah, massage? just a little doggy massage. I think she's I'm going to open up like home. a little massage parlor for dogs. <laughs> okay, who does not want to take this dog home? And she is available for adoption. Her name is Minnie. Now, she may not be there when you come down for her, but do keep in mind, as I was leaving this morning there are a lot of chihuahuas at the shelter right now so and just a lot of cute doggies and kitties definitely that need definitely that are this cute too yeah. you give them a massage like this they'll look exactly <laughs> like it thank you melissa Thanks, i love Andy. it when you come on and we get to Thank play with you. all your animals <laughs>